Hello and welcome to the Splendor tutorial brought to you by the Lois Art. My name is Emmanuel Okafo and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to generate 3D assets from 3D scans. So in this tutorial, we're looking at using a free mobile software called Displayland to generate a 3D asset and then we'll be using that asset in our pipeline to create a, a clean version that we could use for animation down to generating texture right from the scan. So we'll be baking the image texture from the scan. So this will be a fun tutorial, so let's get started. So we'll be using DisplayLand to get our asset for, that we'll be using in this tutorial. DisplayLand like Blender is a free application that works both on Android and on Apple devices. This application is quite easy to get started with. Um, it has very nice friendly interface which um, once you see it, you just know what to do. So it enables you to be able to generate 3D asset that you can use for animation, games, or even just for fun that you could share with your friends. Um, this application is quite powerful and it uses Google AR technology. And in your process of creating asset, you might run with, into some issues, especially when you don't really know what to do. Um, don't worry, they have a very nice documentation on their site and I'll provide a link. Basically how this works is you get your phone and turn on the capture feature and then you want to go around any the object which you're trying to get you just go around and you can see but indicating the level of details which you've captured uh, so if you want really high detail you want to let it to get to the highest um, bar uh, but if you want to like you don't care about detail you can just leave it at um, the small one uh, but i advise to get the really high bar to get like very nice scripts details like this so it's going to take longer to process and so yeah, um, this is just a basic uh, summary of it and let, now let's get into Blender and work. So this is the model we're working on. Um, I've gone ahead and cleaned it up. Um, I just used the lasso tool and went into the edit mode and just selected uh, some faces. Um, though you can see we cut off some of the details that uh, we might need to recreate. Um, so this should be fun. I will show you the whole process we need to turn this into a 3D asset. So let's see what we have so far. If I go to the material preview, we can see we have the texture which you can get also from DisplayLand 3D. It's not only capturing the 3D object, it's also capturing the texture. Uh, so let's see the shader editor. So I just have a basic emission shader and it's reading the texture file. Okay, so um let's start let's get started with the retopology i'll just turn on my screencast key so you can follow along with any shortcut i'm using also so uh, to start the retopologizing process which of course i'm not going to show you i'm not going to like bore you guys with retopologizing this whole model i will speed up some process so that you guys don't get bored but i'm just going to tell you the essential things that you really need to know um to get started with a good retopology so we'll just add a plane. So it's going to be placed anywhere your cursor is. So at this time it was placed here, so that's why it was there. And we can go ahead and create a new material. So we'll go and just change it to the red color. And you can preview your material because you have it set to material. If it's set to object, you will not be able to see that. So I have it set to material, that's why I can be able to preview the material. Um, now for us to Retopologize. We need um, snapping feature um, tools, so we can enable it here and set it to face. Um, check on this back face coiling. This is going to enable when we retopologize. This plane is going to ignore the back faces of this kind of geometry, which is not really clean. Um, next, we need to just click on this rotate, so it copies the rotation of this object. Sorry, if you click on this align to rotate, then you can follow the normals of the underlying object which can come in handy. Um, you will notice I will not be using the shrink crop modifier because I feel it's, it will limit me especially in objects like this that um, I might I'm not too sure sh the shapes some of some parts are missing I'm going to run into some errors so I will just stick with using the shrink crop modifier which works better um, which works great. Okay so we can just place this here go into edit mode and grab the vertex select and we can just move this bar test into place. So you can see we are beginning to not see the object again. So we can go to the modifier, solidify, and just increase the thickness. 
okay so now we can be able to see it and now we can work basically all we just need to do is just extrude the edges and try to create a nice edge loop that is going to be uh, that is going to preserve the edges and is going to like work well with subdivisions okay so for this part that we have like um, some details going on here and we need to model and we we want to model that detail so we'll just try to keep a space here for it that we will do later Okay, so for the heels, I'm going to show you a nice technique that you can use in just any um, stuff you're retopologizing that looks like this. So all you need to do is just extrude this to roughly match the shape. We'll scale it on the z-axis. So you should just roughly match the shape. Okay, and we can go ahead and leave this open for now. So what you want to do is just select this by growing the edge loops and going into the data panel. So we want to add a new vertex group with this selected faces. We'll do assign. And now we'll go to the modifier. We'll add a shrink wrap modifier and move it above the solidifier modifier. Now we'll select the scan shoe. And you see it will try it will just copy the shape, but we just want to restrict it to this area we selected. And you can see we have just filled up that side. And we can just hit apply and we have it saved. Okay, so now we are done and we can hide this scan object and see what we have going on. And at this point, we can actually just combine these two. So we have copied all the nice detail, even the small ones. And at this point, we can go ahead and just model this one, this detail at the back. So we select this and just insert. And Turn of the proportional edits and extrude. Most of those artifacts will go off when, once you just turn off the solidify modifier, which we'll not be using um, for the final render. Okay, so we have a nice clean model that we can use as a base with nice topology.
and we can create UV map. So for the UV map, um, this is already flattened, and that's good enough. We can click this. So we want to add seams to this area for the hills. So Control E, Max Seam, and if we use the face select, we can. That means we didn't mark the correct one, so we need to select this edge. And now we can island select this hill and just um, select the eight edge and max seam on hide. So we can now select this part. So we want to cut a seam here. Somewhere going around. Probably we could do something like this. We'll cut that out too. So we can hide this. And trying to select an edge, so probably this we do. So if we go to our, bring out our UV editor, so shift 10. We can start unwrapping to see if we have a good UV. And this looks great. So we can unhide the rest and then unwrap everything together. And now just to clean it up a little bit, we can go to the UV and do minimize stretching. So just try to even out the faces more and with that we have a nice UV map and let's create a new material for this before we project the textures so we'll call this shoe mat and let's bring this up so we use this as our shader editor So for the shoe mat, we'll just add a new texture, image texture, we'll hit new, we'll set this to a 2K texture, 20, 20 by 2048, and we'll call this shoe. Um, diffuse. Okay, um, you can leave the color as default, and we'll just hit OK. Now, we'll co connect this to the col base color. And at this point, we can unhide the scan shoe. So just to see better, we can use random. Now we want to select the scan shoe. You can do that by the outline, and, and we can call this clean shoe. So if we select the scan shoe and then shift select the clean shoe, we can go to the render settings for baking. But before that, you want to make sure that the scan shoe is using an emission shader so that we are not getting any stuff just to be safe use an emission shader for the base color for the, the scan shoe okay and now if we select the scan shoe and shift select the clean shoe we can go to bake and set it to emit okay and we want to do selected to active and we can leave everything as default and just hit bake um, depending on your size, uh, it will render faster. So as you can see, uh, this is real time. Okay, so it's done, and this is what we have. If we can hide this scan geometry, this is it. The clean version. This can be used for animation. Though we have some sp some patchy spot that we need to fix, and we can fix that through Photoshop or just um, editing. Yeah, so um, that's it, guys. I hope this tutorial was helpful and fun for you guys. Um, go ahead and check out Displayland 3D. Um, they were sponsored. They sponsored this video, and uh, I'm really happy that finally we got it once the first sponsor for this channel. So it's a happy day for us. Um, so go ahead and check it out. It's a very fun app. It's free. Um, so bye bye for now. See you next time.